As a small island developing state, Fiji is one of the countries most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Yet, Fiji has in many ways demonstrated leadership in international climate action by being the first country to ratify the Paris Agreement and adopting ambitious targets in its first nationally determined contribution, NDC, under the Paris Agreement and was among the first countries and the first SIDS to develop an NDC implementation roadmap. Fiji is submitting this long-term low emission development strategy. The Fiji Low Emission Development Strategy 2018 to 2050 is a living document compiled to define pathways to achieve low emission development in Fiji until 2050. The Low Emission Development Strategy enhances the Fijian government's ability to plan for decarbonization of the economy in the long term. It also provides a framework and a pathway for progressive revision and enhancement of targets under its nationally determined contributions. The consultations were to address the development of Fiji's 2015 vision for low emission development in each sector, scenario development in each sector, including business as usual, high ambition and very high ambition mitigation scenarios, and validation of findings for each sector. For Fiji, the, uh, the low emission development strategy is actually very much aligned to the national, the five year and the 20 year national development plan for the Fijian government, which also calls for a deep decarbonization and the achievement of the net zero um, by, by 2050. And because if, if we're looking at enhancing our NDCs, NDCs stand for nationally determined contributions under the Paris Agreement. So if we are to revise and, and, and submit uh, to the UN um, enhanced indices. I think it's, it's, it's critical that um, countries undertake long-term emissions reduction planning, you know, because this then, you know, helps countries to understand what their emission sources are and really uh, based on the long-term planning, they can then sort of, you know, move in an incremental manner in terms of, you know, what they can mitigate and of course, you know, map onto the cycles of the um, uh, Paris Agreement. The low emission development strategy is primarily focused on mitigation rather than adaptation, which is the primary focus of Fiji's national adaptation plan. The LEDS focuses on seven key sectors as well as cross-cutting issues covering the whole of Fiji's economy. For the Fijian Low Emission Development Strategy, we have in fact taken a whole of economy approach, which essentially means that we've looked at various sectors of the Fijian economy and how they can contribute towards the de decarbonization. For example, we have looked at the energy sector, which of course looks at uh, looks at you know um, renewable energy um, side of things, and of course you know transportation, which includes land, maritime, and um, um, air transportation and of course we also have uh, the AFOLU sector which stands for agriculture, forestry and other land use sector which um, of course has a lot of you know mitigation um, uh, you know potential. We've also looked at the mitigation potential of the waste sector in the in the leads um, analysis, and and finally the sector which uh, which is you know quite unique to the Fijian leads um, uh, analysis is um, is the inclusion of the coastal wetlands. The greenhouse gas emissions um, is in the land transport sector is is a it's a great contributor. It's a huge contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. The land transport sector. Um, we all know that and uh, I guess until recently there hasn't been much emphasis or focus on, on the reduction part, especially when we're talking about the South Pacific uh, region. In my view, uh, transforming to a low or zero emission uh, transportation in the Pacific um, can be done, it can be expedited. Uh, Pacific countries are ideally placed and can accelerate adoption of cleaner transportation. So technology is fast changing and we cannot escape that. Uh, we need to act now and we need to align ourselves to these developments if we are to ensure that our emission goals are, are met. Waste sector contributes 4% uh, of the total uh, greenhouse gas emissions in Fiji. Our largest em emission sector is the energy sector. So with the implementation of uh, NDC roadmap, where we're going to go heavy on uh, renewable energy, so the emissions from the energy sector would actually decrease. And then in future, if you don't do anything about the waste sector, then the emissions from the waste sector is bound to increase further.
so it will you know contribute sizable portion of our greenhouse gas inventory now in a very high ambition scenario uh, even like considering um, diversion of waste uh, considering um, recycling of uh, paper and plastics and considering the waste to energy option at uh, Kinoya it only reduces uh, methane emissions by um, 70 percent uh, by 2050 you know as compared to the business as usual scenario uh, so if we are really aiming for a deep decarbonization in the waste sector we need to also consider waste to energy in the uh, solid waste disposal sector it gives um, the direction to government ministries, agencies, and also, of course, the, the private sector and civil society as well, as to where they should start uh, doing their own planning, uh, putting in place the right policies for low carbon development, and also what technology should be introduced, as well as what skills they need to have, uh, need to plan for new skills in the sectors. Achieving Fiji's very high ambition scenario will be challenging. But it is possible with the establishment of a comprehensive enabling environment, sufficient access to technology and climate financing, extensive capacity building and education programs. The overall impact of the project is that Fiji will continue to take the lead in setting a pathway to a low carbon future and contribute to the implementation of the Paris Agreement and keeping 1.5 alive.